Hi, my name is Federico Nocenti and I'm an associate professor at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill and the Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center. It is really my pleasure to show you the highlights of a study that we have conducted in metastatic colorectal cancer patients that have been profiled for somatic uh, DNA mutations and testing the association with the survival of patients in the trial. So the study was conducted in uh, the uh, clinical trial CLGB SWOG 80405. Patients have been treated in the first line metastatic setting and the study has compared uh, the effect of the biologics bevacizumab and cetuximab for overall survival. The study has enrolled about 1,000 patients and uh, despite the fact that there were no um, statistically significant differences in overall survival. Samples have been collected from the patients, tumor samples have been collected from the patients and have been studied to find molecularly defined profiles of patients that might uh, respond better to the therapies and potentially might uh, benefit from additional interventions uh, when they would progress. So the aims of the study are to determine the mutational profile of metastatic colorectal cancer patients in CAGB SWOG80405, to evaluate the prognostic value of these mutations, to evaluate the relative benefit of bevacizumab versus cetuximab in relation to these mutations, and to identify molecular-defined groups that would benefit from personalized therapy. The study, again, is in first-line metastatic setting. Patients were randomized to receive cetuximab or bevacizumab on the backbone of chemotherapy for Fury and for Fox. These are a KRAS wild type population for codons 12 and 13. The paper is uh, recently uh, accepted in press in JAMA. DNA extracted from 500 patients, tumor specimens. The DNA mutations have been characterized in 12 genes, and you see here beta-catenin, EGFR, BRF, ALRAS, T53, and others. We have also characterized the MSI high status of patients by microsatellites, and we have applied next-generation sequencing through Foundation 1 to characterize the mutational load of each tumor. This is one of the main findings. We see a very strong negative prognostic effect of the BRF mutations in patients that are positive for these mutations. You see that Patients with BRAP mutations have a median overall survival of 13 months versus patients that do not have BRAF mutations, and they have a survival of 34 months. You see the hazard ratio is 1.67, with a p-value of 0 0.0035. Because of the effect of tumor location on the prognosis of these patients, when we do remove tumor location from the multivariate analysis, we still see very strong effect of BRAF with a hazard ratio of 1.82 and a p-value of 0 0.0001. The other main finding is that the MSI status of patients does not impact the overall survival. MSI high patients were found in about 7% of this population. You can see here from the graph, patients that have the MSI high status have a median overall survival of 30 months and patients that are MS stable, the MSS group, have a median overall survival of 32 months. The hazard ratio is 0.84 and the p-value is 0.50. When stratified by the BRF positivity for mutations, you can see that patients that are in the MSI high group have a much higher frequency of BRF mutations, 52% versus 11% in the MSS group. The other key finding that we have discovered is that when we look at the interaction of the MSI status with biologics, we can see that patients in the MSS group, there's no difference between the effect of bevacizumab and cetuximab, each of them having a median overall survival of about 30 months, but patients in the MSI high group, they seem to benefit from bevacizumab compared to cetuximab. See patients treated with bevacizumab in the MSI high have a median survival of 30 months, versus patients in the cetuximab arm having a median survival of 12 months. This is an interaction between the MSI status and the treatment for a p-value for interaction of 0 0.0002. When stratified by the BRF status, 
the BRF positive patients in the bevacizumab arm were 61% and the BRF positive patients in the cetuximab arm were 46%. This is consistent with the previous studies conducted in the adjuvant setting for colorectal cancer, identifying that patients with bevacizumab, they were MSI high benefit from bevacizumab compared to just uh, chemotherapy alone. When we look at the mutational load in the MSS group of patients, we see that patients that tend to have a higher mutational load in their tumors, they tend to survive longer. And they have a median survival of, of 36 months versus patients that have a low value for mutational load, and they tend to survive less, such as 30 months. This is a hazard ratio of 0.67 and a p-value of 0.02. So read the main conclusions. For MSI high, the MSI high patients seem to have improved survival when treated with bevacizumab compared to cetuximab. This will be in agreement with the subset analysis of the CO8 clinical trial that has been published recently in the adjuvant setting. Although due to the, due to the small number of patients, the findings require confirmatory studies in the metastatic setting. Regarding the mutational load in uh, MSS patients, this is the first large series indicating an effect of improved overall survival in patients with a higher mutational load in their tumors, at least to the best of our knowledge. The optimized cutoff of eight for mutational load requires additional validation, and combined with other types of profiling, of molecular profiling of the tumor of patients, the definition of mutational load in MSS patients might inform the selection of immune-based interventions. It's been a pleasure presenting these highlights um, on behalf of all the authors contributing to this work, and thanks for your attention.